And hello and welcome to Open, the show opening the Bronx and the rest of the world right to you. I am Darren Hyman. Mean, today we'll update you on what's happening in and around our borough and New York City. Coming up, we'll learn about an organization that's focused on helping the community improve their public speaking as well as their leadership skills. Then we'll discuss how ArchCare is being honored for its exemplary work cu workplace culture. More details on that a little bit later on in the show. And then we're going to talk about a partnership promoting the educational and vocational development of young adults residing in the Bronx. Then afterwards, we'll learn about an initiative exposing young New Yorkers of color to be able to work in healthcare and provide them access to mentorship from leaders in the field. And then finally, we'll introduce you to an art gallery turning the human iris into a masterpiece. So stay tuned because all this and much more is heading your way because right now, we're officially open. I'm Darren Jaime, and you are watching Open, a live program that's bringing the Bronx and New York City straight to you. We also want to welcome our viewers to the Manhattan Neighborhood Network as Open is being broadcast simultaneously on MNN's channels. Now, you can stay connected to us on all of our social media platforms at BronxNet TV. Some things have been going on throughout the past week, and uh, we're going to take you through it with some Bronx updates. start off with cannabis news. Mothers on the move, Canna Bronx, and community members gather for a rally on the proposed cannabis regulations. Our Bronx Net reporter, Brittany Schuyler Aubain, has a story. In the Third Avenue section of the Bronx, Mothers on the Move, Canna Bronx, and community members gathered for a rally on the proposed cannabis regulations. These community members want to make it clear that when it comes to cannabis licensing regulations, put them first. We are a little concerned that social equity applicants are not really benefit are going to benefit. There isn't any, we're hearing that there isn't going to be funding available until 2025. The Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act states that communities disproportionately impacted and especially those individuals with past marijuana related convictions are to be given priority for licenses issued for the growth and sale of cannabis. However, the Office of Cannabis Management is proposing regulations that could cause barriers for those living in disproportionate communities who want to obtain their license. The rules need to be f more fair. Um, it's, very it's going to be very difficult for people, regular people, to get through that process. More so, there seem to be discrepancies regarding the funding that will be allocated to cannabis business owners after they submit their applications. They promised to raise us about $150 million. They have not raised nowhere near that amount. They're saying that no money will be available for the, the, the rest of the folks who apply after when the market opens. With the combination of lack of resources and restrictive regulations looming over the cannabis business, there is a chance that the New York cannabis industry will be dominated by big businesses instead of New Yorkers who've been impacted by the war on drugs. Reporting for BronxNet, Brittany Schuyler Albain. And thank you, Brittany. In other news, the Bronx Music Heritage Center celebrates the 50th anniversary of the birth of hip hop by bringing back its series. Our Bronx reporter, Carrie Moody, has the details. The Bronx Music Heritage Center celebrates the 50th anniversary of the birth of hip-hop by bringing back their series, Conversations with the Masters. The first master bringing back the series is none other than the first female MC, Sha 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 Rock. Now when I sit on the throne to command my own, number one in New York on that microphone. To have me come, you know, and talk about what I've contributed to the culture, especially with it being the 50 years of hip-hop, you, you could only... Um, be happy about that, you know, because I am, you know, one of the people, you know, to help, 
you know, move this culture forward. Shy Rock has a book titled Luminary Icon. Rock tells us more. I had the book since 2011, you know, and um, I wrote the book. You know, a lot of people know about it and a lot of people don't. Um, I also have it where, you know, you can download it, you know, on the audio as well. And so it basically tells the story, you know, at MC Shy Rock of how I, I started, you know, and I, and I basically wanted to get to the points. I didn't, you know, go on and on, you know, about different scenarios, but I wanted to leave that for the movie. You know what I'm saying? That I'm, I'm trying to, you know, bring to fruition. So, yes, I do have a book out. It's called Luminary Icon. And, and so uh, if you are a fan of Shy Rock, so even if you don't know who I am, you must get the book. This year will be the fifth year Shy Rock Day takes place at Gun Hill Park the first Saturday in June. We're going into our fifth fifth year, you know. Um, when they gave me the day, they went back and, and looked at, you know, all of the uh, young men, you know, that came up in the game, you know, the MCs and the DJs that were celebrated, you know. And so when they went back and did the backstory, you know, of me you and know, all of my accomplishments, they decided to uh, give me that day, you know, in New York City. So Congressman at the time, you know, Andy King said, OK, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. You know, and I didn't know I, I was doing an audition, you know, for my movie, you know, and um, he wind up presenting me with MC Sean Rock Day. When it comes to the Bronx Music Heritage Center, we can always expect to walk away with a piece of Bronx history. For BronxNet, this is Kyrie Moody. And thank you, Carrie. If you want to find out how the Bronx continues to celebrate hip hop, of course, stay tuned to us right here at Bronxnet. In health news, Essen Healthcare opened a new location in the Castle Hill section of the Bronx. And our Bronxnet reporter, Kibben Aline, was there and brings us the details right now. Essen Healthcare expanded its efforts in the Bronx with the opening of a brand new location in Castle Hill. It's part of our mission to create access to care to all of the Bronx. Opening its 37th location, Essen aims to assist nearly 40,000 patients in the neighboring communities. Essen Healthcare realized there was a need for this type of service following the addition of their mobile clinics during the pandemic. In this area, we witnessed that the vans were putting in more work because people didn't have anywhere else to go. And we identified this as an area needing healthcare accessibility. The healthcare center will provide provide primary as well as urgent care, a much needed resource in the Bronx, a borough known to struggle with health outcomes. It's good for the um, sound area of the Bronx because they need more health clinics. Sometimes they call the Bronx the number 62 on the health care because, you know, we have the highest statistics of asthma. But if the seniors have this to look forward to, they can have a better, healthy lifestyle. What's really critical about opening services like this and facilities like this is not only about serving our people that are aging in place and our young people that are going to school and our families. It's really about trying to find the best ways to target how the Bronx is still 62 out of 62 counties of being unhealthy. To learn more about Essen Healthcare's mission and to stay up to date with their efforts, please visit their website at EssenHealthcare.com. Reporting for BronxNet, Kib and Aline. And thank you, Kib, and that is all the time we have for our Bronx updates. We are taking a quick break. I want you to stay with us and we'll have more open when we return. Man, it's lonely. Like, going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. Donating pet food is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Que color? Perfecto, mijo. Gracias. Thank you. Donating to a pet's medical care is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. 
Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut, the one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking, now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. And welcome back. Co-op City Toastmasters Club is a not-for-profit or academic organization that's helping individuals improve their communication, public speaking, and leadership skills, which in turn fosters greater self-confidence and personal growth. And joining us now to tell us more details is Co-op City Toastmasters Club's Vice President of Public Relations, Loretta J. J. Sora, Treasurer, Andrea Hay, and Vice President of Education, Marietta C. Phoenix, and they're here with us. And uh, welcome. It's been a little while, but good to have you. Welcome, nice. welcome. Good to be here. Good to have you. And so, again, a little bit about the Toastmasters Club. Really, what are you talking about? You know, start with you first, Loretta. Talk to us a little bit about the mentorship, right? Because it's really helping people become uh, leaders, speakers, advocates. So, yeah. story doesn't know, let us know. Thank you again. We're so happy to be here back with you. Mm -hmm. And after COVID, we want the world, the community to know that we are still here, ready to help with speaking and leadership skills. Just one correction. I've been a Toastmaster very long. I'm not the current public relations. Okay. I am the current sergeant at arms, but I've held every office there <laughs> is in the club. And we are here as part of a PR team to get the news out that, Darian, just like you do here, mm -hmm. we are trying to do that in our community because communication is really not an option. Right. We have to be able to speak clearly, make ourselves known, make our messages known, and to do it in a friendly way that will be warming and let others know Basically, we're here to help. Mm -hmm. Andrew, take me behind the curtain a little bit. So if I become a Toastmaster and I get involved in the process, what does the process actually entail? The process entails bringing you in, introducing you to pathways where we then match it up to what your interests are. For example, if you want to be a podcaster, we would introduce you in, make you comfortable, and teach you how to present in a comfortable way. Very nurturing environment, for, and we make it fun. We make it fun. So we teach you also how to present, how to project your voice, how to present your material in a nice, concise way so people will like to hear it without the ahs, the ums, and the ohs. Yeah, that's one of the things we have to work on, Marietta. You know, we, we spend a lot of time talking sometimes, and you know, I. I could watch television count how many times do I say, oh, oh uh, and I feel guilty. You know, it happens, but you work to work out the kinks. Give me some of the benefits, if you will, for, for becoming a Toastmaster. Obviously, we get rid of the odds, the ums, and the o's, but there's a whole lot more to it. Well, you develop personal rapport with others. You develop confidence as a speaker. Many people who take this course, they go on to develop their own businesses. For example, we have one person, she's actually a public speaker, she, book, she gets bookings or that sort of thing, and that's one of the things that you get as a Toastmaster. Yeah. And Loretta, uh, it's something to say about this because in, in, in many ways you're helping people with speaking, but it's also about leadership, right? And I think in a society where leadership is necessary, uh, you're also branding the next generation of leaders. Exactly. And leadership is one way that I got here t this morning. As I said, I am not the official public relations, but I took on the task of getting together with, your, with the Bronx Network, mm -hmm. and here we are. But there's another crucial difference between um, Toastmasters International. Uh, International. As you said, it's nonprofit. But we are not instructor-based, and that's a very key issue. There's no pass 
and no fail. Mm. You come in and we meet you wherever you are in your speaking ability and help you to enhance and to get better. It's all on you and you are worth it and we help you find a way. But there is no pass or fail. You come in, we help each other and when you turn around, you've achieved the completion of the program. There is a program that we follow, speaking program that we follow, that's put forth through Toastmasters International. But we are a nonprofit and we are not professor led. Right. We are individually led. For yourself, how has it transformed you, your work, what you do? It has transformed my life greatly. When I started Toastmasters seven years ago, I could not answer your questions. I would be really shy. It has opened up a whole new world for me. Not only did I become comfortable leading my nursing unit, mm -hmm. I also now am a realtor. And I can speak to anyone, anywhere, at any time. And um, in addition to that, I am the president of the Mount Vernon Co-op, um, Mount Vernon Downtown Merchants Association. And now I have to speak in front of people, in front of officials, and it's really easy. It you're, gave you're, me that confidence that I needed. You're good now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So for somebody, uh, I know you want, to, you want to add on to that too? Go with your question. Okay, I'll, I'll ask you a little bit about this. When you talk about integrity, respect, service, excellence, what do those words mean? Integrity, well, you take on roles and you, whatever you say you'll do, you'll do. And that's very important because um, the members run the club and that's the lifeblood of the club. Without the members, we don't have a club. Mm -hmm. There is no overarching group that watches over us. We are the club and it is our club. Respect, we respect everyone where they are. People come in wherever you are, that's where you will th that's where we'll start mm -hmm. so we have to be able to respect people's issues and people come in and they're stutterers and we can't hold that against them we mm -hmm. get them a chance and let them find their path there are 11 paths in toastmasters mm -hmm. and they work from there some people want to be funny there's a storytelling path some people want to work learn to work with others there's a path for that some people want to develop their presentation skills. There is a path for that as well. Anything you want within the cup, it's there for you. So, brothers, uh, the big question is somebody's out there watching saying, well, how do I become a part and what's the criteria to become a part? What do they have to do? Well, you have to contact us and our website is 3824toastmastersclubs.org. But may I go back and just address the question mm -hmm. about ethics. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is watch television today and you'll see there's no ethics. There appears to be no ethics. Mm -hmm. And ethics is something that you do when no one is listening. Communication is a very broad, broad field, as you say, and as we all know. But we are each other's little man on the shoulder and we impart that to all of the members who come in. And at the bottom, the founder, where since 1924, it was organized. So a little over 90 years, it has succeeded and grown, and we continue with those core values that you just said. Well, for those who wanted to take part, of course, we give you some information on how you can get connected, but uh, I'll give you the final word. Uh, what do you want people to know last before we go? Come and join us. <laughs> we meet every first and third Thursday, 7.30 in the evening. And it's a fun place to come and enjoy yourself. And while as you with learn. the times, we are first meeting of the month is hybrid. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the second one, and I'm sorry, the first meeting of the month is virtual. Mm -hmm. And the third Thursday is a hybrid meeting. Well, ladies, I want to thank you for joining us. And congratulations on the work that's being done. And Good to see you in this post, if you could say, COVID environment. Glad to have you sitting next to us. Good to Thanks have you. for having us back. Thanks, oh, thank you. Glad to have you back. All right, now listen, if you want more information, again, visit their website, 3824toastmastersclub.org, and uh, you can find out all that you want and become a Toastmaster. We encourage you, don't go anywhere. We've got more open coming up right after this.
Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor George? Man, please, that's a classic. Oh, you know when they say him? people Boy, are a rare breed? Get off my house. Yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, Sharon, you know I'm for you. I know. Go get the football. Yeah. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy, George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. I'll be your sub today. Can you see anything different as a pill? No. No. You don't know? Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. There is only one thing that will save somebody's life. That is naloxone nasal spray. Fentanyl is cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? It's really just all about the money. I just didn't realize that one pill could change your whole life. More kitchen now. And welcome back. Arch Care cares for people of ages and face where they're most comfortable and best able to receive it. At home, in the community, and in nursing homes. The organization was certified by the Great Place to Work Institute and its senior partner, I should say senior care partner, Activated Insights for its exceptional work culture and here now we're sharing more details is the and information we've got the assistant vice president of learning of organizational development at arch care chelsea brock and uh, chelsea glad to have you with us and uh congratulations to arch care for all the great work that you continue to do thank you so much darren it's a pleasure to be here and i know that you know part of the work that goes on is that you're really providing services to people who really need it the most we talk about families and we talk about also, having that opportunity to receive care wherever you are, and I said before, in the community or at home, uh, break down for us a little bit behind the scenes of what goes on at Arch Care. Sure. Um, Arch Care has an incredible depth of services that we provide. Uh, those who are familiar with Arch Care are often associated with us with our nursing homes. Um, and we do have seven nursing homes under the Arch Care umbrella. Uh, we have two on Staten Island, Egger Nursing Home and Carmel Richmond Nursing Home. We have one in Rhinebeck, New York, Ferncliff Nursing Home. Uh, two in Manhattan, Mary Manning Walsh and Terrence Cardinal Cook Healthcare Center. And we have two in the Bronx, uh, Providence Rest and St. Vincent de Paul Nursing Homes. Um, but in addition to that, we do offer a wide range of programs and services outside of skilled nursing care. Uh, we have adult daycare, we have short-term rehabilitation, assisted living, home care, um, end of life options. Uh, and we do offer specialized care for um, specific populations who have um, unique care needs. Um, such as those with Huntington's disease, uh, dementia, HIV and AIDS, children with severe de developmental disabilities. Um, and we do all also have three healthcare plans. Uh, we have ArchCare Advantage, which is a Medicare Advantage plan that provides coverage to individuals residing in nursing homes. Uh, we have um, ArchCare Community Life, which is a managed long-term care plan, um, which uh, streamlines coverage for um, individuals with chronic conditions. And we have Arch Care Senior Life, which is our PACE program. Um, we often talk about our PACE program as a nursing home without walls. Um, so individuals with PACE coverage receive all of the same services that they would get within a nursing home, such as nursing care, dietary, um, occupational, physical, and recreational therapy. They also receive transportation um, and home care. So they receive all of these services while also being able to sleep in their beds, in their homes, in their communities at night. Yeah. I want to take an opportunity to ask you a question about being, you know, you guys were honored recently. Newsweek says you're, you know, one of the uh, 
America's best nursing homes, and uh, that's a high honor. But what do you think it, for yourself makes the difference for you guys being listed? What makes the difference for Arch Care uh, in getting that listing and being one of America's best? Yeah, we, um, we've been listed several years in a row now. Five of our nursing homes were listed on it this last year for New York's top um, nursing homes. So Mary Manning Walsh and Terrence Cardinal Cook um, in Manhattan, Ferncliff Nursing Home in Rhinebeck, and both of our Bronx nursing homes placed this year at um, number 21 for Providence Rest and number 22 for St. Vincent de Paul. And we really strive to have the highest level of quality of care for um, our residents and um, to, you know, uh, follow all um, infection prevention and control um, procedures and protocols um, so that everyone is safe, uh, um, both residents and those that work in our facilities. For someone who's considering actually having to put a loved one possibly in a nursing home, uh, obviously a great deal of counseling has to go into that, talking people, walking people, uh, walking, pe walk, walking people through. Talk to us about the services that you provide in getting people just to be able to land at a nursing facility, which can be such a hard, a hard challenge for many families. Yeah, um, the first place they can start is going to our website at archcare.org or reaching out to our care navigation line, which can really um, refer individuals to the proper program that would be um, the most appropriate for their loved one. So all of our contact information is available on our website. Yeah, and so for yourself, I know you pride yourself on really provi providing that quality of care. And uh, what are you finding to be some of the most dominant things are needed by, right now by your residents that maybe the public isn't so familiar with. You know, we're coming out of the COVID situation. I know wrestling and dealing with a lot. Talk to us about what you feel are some of the things that maybe uh, that we need to know about. Uh, I mean, we are coming out of the, the COVID-19 situation, but that still remains um, a very, very a crucial factor um, on, on a day-to-day -day basis in all of our nursing homes to, to make sure that we, we maintain a high level of standards um, in protecting our residents, um, and keeping everyone in the facilities as safe as possible. Uh, we also strive to have a high level of um, customer service and treating all of our residents um, with compassion and care, um, you know, like, like a member of the family. So for people who want to find out more information, of course, we'll give it to them a little bit, a, a little bit later on. But for you, uh, and you talk about the work that goes on, and a lot of great residents, I mean, a lot of great employees, I should say, providing care for your residents, uh, talk to us a little bit about your staff, and uh, I know you're very proud of the work that they do because, listen, uh, you wouldn't be getting honored if it wasn't for quality staff. Exactly, yeah. They are the ones who really, um, you know, put us on those Newsweek top nursing home lists. They're the ones that, um, you know, make us um, make us a, a great place um, to provide care to, to people's loved ones. So we put a lot of energy um, into our staff um, to improving the culture, to improving the experience for them. Um, you know, uh, employees who are um, engaged and satisfied in the work they do also provide the highest level of quality of care to um, those that they serve. And so uh, before we go, I'll give you an opportunity to say, listen, uh, if you got another word that you want to share with our viewers, go ahead and share it right now. Sure. Um, if you know we we were certified as a great place to work in 2022, we're so proud of that. Um, we worked very very hard in um, elevating our um, our company culture, um, our level of trust and pride uh, in our organization, and we are always looking for passionate people who um, would like to join our team, who are interested in healthcare. So anyone who uh, would like to join the ArchCare team, we encourage them to go to our website um, at archcare.org slash careers to see available opportunities. All right, well, Chelsea, we wanna thank you so much again. Congratulations for the great work that uh Arch Care is doing, and of course, if you're just joining us, recognized as one of Newsweek's list of America's best nursing homes, talking about Arch Care. So Chelsea Brock has been with us, and she's the Assistant Vice President of Learning and Organizational Development at Arch Care. And thanks a lot, Chelsea, for being with us. Thanks so much for having me, Darren. All righty. For our viewers, again, if you want more information, please visit the website at archcare.org, and then call them, 855-951-CARE or 855-951. 951-2273. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. We've got more open coming up right after this. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. 
Look at that. You, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, Backpack Kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I got to get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Oh, honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. And welcome back. Robinhood partnered with Future Now to assist its students to earn their high school equivalency degrees, entering college, and achieving their dreams. And Future Now has celebrated over 20 years of service to community, youth, and their families. And we're pleased to have joining us the director at Future Now at Bronx Community College, Elizabeth Payamps, uh, managing director of Early Childhood Youth at Robin Hood, Deborah McCoy, and Stanford University student, Zuburu Sayabu. And we thank you all for joining us and glad to have you sharing with us. I'll start off first with, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit with uh, Deborah, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Deborah, and then to Elizabeth. Uh, but first of all, give us a little bit. I mean, you got Zubaru here, a wonderful student that's doing great work at, at uh, Stanford University. But for a student, really the opportunity to further his education, their education, their career. So give us a little insight into how this all works. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation. I am um, excited to be here with Deb McCoy and, um, and of course, Aldea Zubi. We are located uh, at Bronx Community College, and thanks to the support of the Robin Hood Foundation, our goal is to uh, help students um, who are disconnected from work and school to um, be able to reorganize their lives and aspire to have better futures. We have been going. Um, we started in 1998 at BCC. We have about 10,000 students who have graduated with a GED diplomas and many more that have gone on to uh, graduate from college. Suvi is one of those students. Our students also become tutors for our current students, as Suvi did. And they are very powerful because they are able to help their peers to achieve uh, their goals. And very proud, very honored. And so, Deborah, for you, obviously, an opportunity to help to transcend the lives of young people and to get them to another level. Talk to us a little bit about how this all comes about and, and, your, and your role in this. Okay, I'm happy to do that and happy to be here. Um, so I'm a managing director at Robin Hood, which means I have the privilege of hunting out organizations that share our mission, which is to fight poverty in New York City, and who are doing it in innovative, inventive, and data-driven ways. When I met Elizabeth way back in 2007, she struck me as somebody who was driven to support students to start and complete their educational journeys, and also to prove the case of her organization and its impact. So we have been funding her consistently since 2007. That's about, I don't know, 16 straight years because every single year she's able to provide data showing not only the successes of individual students like Zubaru, which we celebrate, but of all of her students. So we consider Future Now to be a very successful youth serving organization and one that can demonstrate its impact in the lives of its students 
and in the in the in its community in the Bronx. Every student that graduates and goes on to get a degree is improving the economic profile of not only the Bronx, their community, the Bronx, but also of the city. Zubaru, I want to ask you, uh, first of all, congratulations out there at Stanford University and uh, obviously uh, the one that's been selected today. Uh, talk to me about how this has helped you and uh, how things are going out there at Stanford. Great. Um, I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, I came to Future Now um, when immediately when I came to the U.S. in 2018, of course, in the bonds. Um, so I got my GED at Future Now uh, in 2019. And one thing I'll say about Future Now is that uh, there is a, this is a community um, that uh, help students, meaning a student, uh, student like me, uh, meaning minorities. And um, I feel like when I came there, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't pressured. Um, and they were always there to listen to me. And then uh, whenever uh, you made a mistake or you weren't able to uh, do well on the exam, they are there to tell you that uh, it's okay to fail. And it's something that uh, hold on to me. Uh, and, and yeah, and after graduating uh, from the program, I decided to um, go to community college, of course, at Bronx Community College, BCC. And then I graduated in 2019, uh, 2021 with my uh, associate in computer science and I transferred to Stanford. So, and, and um, again, uh, I'm here at Stanford, uh, is uh, very rigorous. Uh, I'm studying with the best students in the world. Uh, it's amazing to be here, but uh, it's tough also to be here. So, yeah. And Elizabeth, I know it's got to be a great feeling seeing a, a student such as Zubru, who's able to excel, do what he's doing, and really, you know, out there at Stanford, but coming right from you. <laughs> It's amazing. And, you know, it's um, what makes our job so enjoyable every day. You know, we have a lot of hardships and we are basically, we identify so much with the students because we know their struggle. But to see Zubi um, is a demonstration that with the right support and the right amount of um, networking, uh, you can achieve, you know, and, and couldn't be more proud of him. I, I, I know he's going to go places, and I know that whoever he works with, they're going to be very lucky to have him on his team. He worked as a tutor at Future Now right after he got his GED, and Zubi helped, out, I, I would say, around over 100 students to get a diploma. So it's a major impact. As Deb say, uh, we have to remember that every student impacts maybe other five people. So this kind of support has a major impact on our communities and also the economy. Um, so we are very, very, very lucky to know Zubi and, uh, and many other students like him that are now attending and looking forward to going on to college and, and then the world of work. Yeah. And Deborah, uh, I want to say that this is exactly what it's all about, right? Now we've got great students. You see the transition, having a young man to be able to go from a GED on to Stanford University and the investment uh, that's being made. Uh, it all pays off. Zuby is the greatest example of the dividend on our investment. We are so thrilled to know him and to experience the joy of his journey and to also know that Future Now has the secret sauce to build that journey for so many other young people. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us in Zubru. I want to congratulate you. Very proud of you. Continue to do the great work representing out there at Stanford University. And uh, you're not just representing Stanford University. You're representing yourself and Future Now and Robin Hood and all of us here. So keep, keep up the great work. We're proud of you and keep it up. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Well, that about ends this segment. But I want to let you know what. If you want more information, visit the website, robinhood.org and bcc.cuny.edu. We encourage you, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Open coming up right after this. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa, los hombres no lloran.
You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Most hiring algorithms would scream me out. Some bosses couldn't see me as a leader. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. I've been running code as long as I've been able to reach a keyboard. This is what I do. It's second nature for me, coordinating 100 details at once. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. I sold them on my skills. You gotta be so good they can't ignore you. My magic is... Analytics important. and empathy. That's how I'm getting clients. You have to have the confidence in yourself to show up and defy the odds. I'm more than who I am on paper. I never got a college degree. And today, I'm the CEO of my own company. People want to tell me I'm one in a million when actually I'm one of millions. The stars are all around us. It's time for them to shine. And welcome back to New York City Health and Hospitals recently announced a new initiative to encourage students, trainees, and physicians from groups underrepresented in medicine to join the system's medical workforce. The new Physician Diversity Initiative will work with students ranging from middle school through graduate medical education, as well as attending physicians to increase diversity in medicine. Here now to share more information is New York City Health and Hospital Senior Vice President and Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Michelle Allen, and then also the Senior Director of Quality and Safety, Marley Ikowitz. And we thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. And so when we talk about these opportunities, there are some opportunities for uh, people who are aspiring here. And so uh, if you will, Dr. Michelle, give us a little bit. Well, let me start with four things that we're trying to address. One, we recognize that health comes overall are better for our patients when their providers come from similar backgrounds, speak the similar language, have the same race, ethnicity, and kind of a cultural background that's the same and it works both ways. The patients feel more comfortable and relatable and we as physicians have a better ability to relate to our patients if we have some degree of commonality. We also know that here at h, &H there is a disparity, there's a difference between what our patients look like and what we look like. And the percentage of black and Latino patients at h, &H is actually twice the percentage of black and Latino providers we also recognize that within our communities where our patients come from, they're actually young people, students who would love to enter the healthcare professions, but haven't quite been given the opportunity, the support or the mentorship that would allow them to realize their dreams. And through Mosaic, we're planning on developing those pathways to see those aspiring youngsters who will eventually become our physicians and work for us here in h, &H to take care of their aunties their grandparents, their extended families within the neighborhood. So that's our aspiration, Darren. And Marley, you're the Senior Director of Quality and Safety for uh, the New York City Health and Hospitals. A little bit about your work and uh, how you fit in all of this. Sure. Um, so my work at Health and Hospitals is to develop programs um, that teach our frontline staff how to improve quality and um, of care on the front lines and some leadership skills. And I was brought into the Mosaic program about a year ago to help build out some of our programs for um, young people, students, medical students, and residents who are um, interested in going into careers as physicians, who are on the training journey and using some of the um, frameworks that we develop from those quality programs and bringing them into Mosaic and developing programs specifically for people who are underrepresented in medicine um, to help them along their career journey and to get them excited about potentially coming to health and hospitals one day. And for somebody who wants to come into health and hospitals, give us a little bit about the work there and what makes this a great environment? 
our patients make it a great environment. We're in the public sector. We take care of patients that ne may not necessarily have any alternatives. They're the bodega keeper, the teacher, the dancer, the artist who's, you know, on managed, Medicaid managed care, people from the community. And when you leave at the end of the day, you know you made a difference in someone's life. And there's a community here. So I've been in H&H &H for a couple of days, probably like 40 years. Um, and it's just continually rewarding. Among the coworkers, there's a spree de corps, whether it's our trauma surgeons, our pediatricians, our obstetricians, our primary care providers, our patients come from our communities. We work a little bit harder, we get paid a little bit less, but we love pushing that stretcher. We love doing our own blood draws. We, it's, it's with a cause, it's with ambition, and we're greatly appreciated. And we have fun doing what we do as well. And Marley, for you, what have you gained the most uh, from your experience? Well, I think, you know, my um, value system is really aligned with the mission of health and hospitals. I believe in providing the best quality of care to everyone. And it is really a joy to do this work. I've been here almost seven years and to have the last few years be working on increasing our diversity um, of our physician workforce. It's been tremendously meaningful. So I'm you know, I think that's my, um, that's what's brought me here every day and what makes me feel really proud to work here. And I have to just interject, Erin, that Marley is part of division that we actually do training and education. So it just falls right in. We have residents, we have medical students, we have fellows. And part of our mission is not just taking care of our patients, but passing the torch along and making sure that the next generation see the value of working in the public institution as, as such as ours in the public system. So it's not just taking care of patients, it's training, it's educating, and it's passing along the mission. Yeah, Dr. Allen, you were kind of hitting on what I was gonna, I was gonna speak to because when I, when I think about exposure, I think that you know having the exposure sometimes makes all the difference in the world. It absolutely does. And I can remember being a young high school student myself and a friend's my best friend's mother worked in a lab at Albert Einstein. And in her genius, knowing that I liked math and science, reached out to her employer, who a scientist uh, who had a lab up at Einstein, and asked if I could spend some time in his lab. And from there, I think the rest is history. Um, being exposed to what it's like in the lab and then being exposed to what it's like on the clinical services. It's that exposure, it's mentorship, it's someone taking an interest in you and feeding you. A lot of the students, so we have affiliations with Morehouse, University of Puerto Rico, and CUNY. And you look where their students come from. There's a significant percentage of our students come from New York City. About 20% 20, 20 of the incoming students at CUNY come from the Bronx, which is your neighborhood. To give them the opportunity to spend some time on the units, whether it's in the endo, endo suite, doing colonoscopies, or in the emergency room, or in labor and delivery, there's an excitement in healthcare that we hope to share with these young students. It's the exposure that gives them the engagement and the excitement, and hopefully the confidence that they too can take the MCATs, pass the MCATs, come to medical school, and do well. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us and sharing a little bit. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for, as we said, the key word was exposure, right? And I think Marley's taking uh, full advantage of the exposure that's being given. And uh, Dr. Allen, for the leadership that you're providing, thank you so much for being with us and uh, sharing with us here on Open. We want to see some of your students come join us. Hey, listen, I'll be glad to send as many as I can your way. Trust me, I think uh, it's a great health field to work in and uh, really the exposure and having more people in it, we need it, especially at a time like this. So no problem on my part. What I can do, I'll Thank do. <laughs> Take Thank care. You. All right. Listen, our viewers, if you want more information, visit the website, nychealthandhospitals.org, and uh, there you can find out more. And go ahead and sign up. Don't go anywhere. we got more open coming up right after this.
you're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Dear moms and dads, what you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. You know it's true. Mom, love you always. Everything I do, I do When you for graduate, you. they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Hey, boss. You okay? I said I'm fine. STEM is everywhere, like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that can be walked through in a VR headset. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker boards. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at shecanstem.com. And welcome back. Eye Origin is a gallery capturing the beauty and uniqueness of the human iris through high resolution imagery. The gallery allows individuals to become the subject of their own art, making their eye a true masterpiece. Here now to share more information is the Soho and Flat Iron, I should say Flat Iron manager of the Eye Origin Art Gallery, Lucas Stancati. And we thank you, Lucas, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I did have that right, the flat iron, right? Yes, yes. We have one yeah. in flat iron and one in Soho. All right. Well, good to have you. And so for people who don't know, um, irises becoming an original piece, eye origin. Break it down for us. All right. So as you said, they are 100% unique. And every, every eye is going to be different. So what we start by doing is showing your right eye and your left eye. They're both going to be very different. They both have different colors, patterns. Then uh, comparing both, you can really see the differences. You choose the one you prefer. Then on that eye, we can take some pictures. You choose how you want to frame it, and we ship it to your house pretty much. And for other people, you know, you have this beautiful art collection. I want to introduce and talk about this art collection. Um, give us a little bit about the art collection and what people can see. Yeah, 100%. So the people, um, the eyes itself that are on our gallery, they're all past people that we photographed. Uh, you can definitely swing by. You can see a lot of different eyes. It's pretty interesting to see. Um, but they're mainly to show you the, the different frames and everything. But um, yeah, with every eye, um, the, the amount of different patterns and colors that you can see on every fiber is completely, completely unique. And it's like a fingerprint itself. And... Um, even the colors itself, the, the green eye, for example, it's never green. You can really see the blue and the yellow that creates that greenish effect on the green eyes. So uh, it really brings a, a new type of, a new perspective to your own eye and to yourself when you look at it. It shocks really everyone that sees it. So, uh, yeah. so you take irises and you take them and you make them into masterpieces. How does it go from being just the iris to this masterpiece? Yeah, so uh, we start by just uh, doing one picture of each eye, as I mentioned. And then once you do choose the eye that you prefer, either the right or the left, uh, we take around 10, 15 pictures. We use different, uh, different flashes. They're very, very high definition pictures. And then by combining all the pictures together, we can remove any reflections, anything of the sort. We leave just the iris, but we're not editing any colors, any patterns. We keep everything as the original eye. And by combining all the pictures, we can create a, uh, a final masterpiece that is just your iris, no reflections, no anything. Just a very high resolution picture of your iris that uh, is printed on the frame that you prefer and it's placed in your house. So it's a very personal masterpiece. Yeah. And so how do you go about the photography process and how does that happen? 
Yeah, so everything everything happens in our gallery. The whole process takes around 10 minutes to get everything done. Um, so with the photography, we're essentially doing micro photography and macro photography, I mean. And it's essentially a custom built camera that the, the creators created. And we photograph around 10, 15 pictures of your eye, but it's very, very close up. And there's uh, extensive training behind the pictures itself. It's uh, it's a bit complicated, but uh, the pictures, the whole process, is fairly quick itself. It doesn't hurt or anything. And uh, the final product is, as you guys have seen. So, if somebody wants to find out and really, you know, take part, how do they go about this? So you can either make an appointment on our website. Uh, it's a little easier for us to know and expect you. Uh, to make sure that we have free time for you when you get there. But uh, if you wanted to just come by, we have two locations, as we mentioned before. One of them is at 409 West Broadway on Soho, and the other one is at 168 Fifth Avenue in Flatiron. And you could just swing by, and we'll definitely be happy to show you your eyes and everything. How did you come about this? I mean, it's pretty interesting here. Yeah, so the whole concept itself, it was, uh, it originated with two brothers. They're both French, uh, Morgan and Stefan, and they started by by doing it mainly as a, as a not as a joke, but more as a hobby with their friends and everything. And a lot of people got really really interested, and uh, they started uh, seeing the true potential of it, potential, and uh, they started looking at it with the business side, and they started it. It's for yourself, what's been the greatest part of all of this? Because obviously, uh, an art collection, people coming by, uh, you know, this is really taking on a life of its own. Yeah, 100%. And uh, for me, the greatest part is, one, the learning. I definitely learned a lot uh, with my time there. A lot about the eye anatomy with uh, uh, photography. And uh, art in general, New York, a lot of the context I've been building up uh, with there. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing, the amount of people that get interested in the stories behind these people. Uh, a lot of people that um, succeeded in different areas, they get very interested. It's an uh, it's, um, interest that is um, I like for many people, many different styles of people. They get interested because it's very personal, you know, it's very meaningful to you. Yeah. So uh, it brings a lot of different types of people together. Well, Luke, it's great having you, bringing us. Look, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be coming together now. You brought us together. So thank you so much for being with us and sharing and best wishes with the project there. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. All righty. We want our viewers to know if you want more information, visit the website at iorigin.us. Well, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewer, for tuning in. And if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch Recablecast on Optimum's Channel 67. Horizon Files, channel 2133, or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Rita Valentine on Friday. This wraps it up for this episode. I'm Darren Jaime. Make sure to keep this channel wide open. Take care, and God bless.